Why should you avoid linked lists? Let's go. Okay. Here, I'd like to, to show an example that first was shown to me by uh, John Bentley of uh, Algorithms fame. Um, make a sequence of random integers, keeping them in order. And so you, 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 you are given uh, the, the numbers uh, 5, 1, 4, 2, and it builds up the sequence as you see it there. And then you remove them again by giving a set of positions of which one you, you uh, take out. And so the exercise is for which n is it better to use a linked list than a vector okay. or an array. Okay. And um, So for those that don't understand, who here doesn't understand the question that was just proposed right here? Type 1 in the chat if you don't understand the question that was proposed. By the way, if you don't love 14p, you know, type 1 in the chat. Okay. So it's actually a pretty, it's a pretty simple question, right? Uh here let us see if we can exit out of here uh let's go to the x cali draw this is that it's a very it's a very interesting question so you could imagine that there exists a world in which there is some large space like this in which you have a bunch of elements right one two three uh four five all the way up to whatever right all the way up to i don't know 69 420 and then you have in another world something that looks like this where, hold on, let me get this thing and drop it all the way down to this. And you have one. And one, well, guess what? One points to two, right? There you go. One points to two, two points to three, all right? So a linked list versus uh, a contiguous memory region called an array, right? And so if you were to remove some random number from here, what has to happen? Well, for this to happen is that it has to take, say you remove 17, well, 18 will have to shift down to where 17 was. 19 has to shift down to where 18 was. 20 has to shift down to where 19 was, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to 69, 420. Whereas with the linked list, if you were to remove two, well, we remove two, and then we just adjust this nice little thing right here. Boom. There we go. It's, it's constant operation, right? You do effectively, if it's a doubly linked list, you do like four operations on it and that's it. Whereas if you had a memory array, you'd have to do a lot of operations on it to get the same effect. So there you go. So that's the problem he's proposing. How big of N do you have to be where a linked list is faster than using an array? Oh, they would have known this if they watched your front alg free algorithms course on Frontend Masters. You're right. Free algorithms course on Frontend Masters, by the way. Frontendmasters.com slash trial. I get $0 if you sign up, never pay for anything, and just watch this. Go for it. Free algorithms course. It is like 11 hours long, okay? 11, 11, 9 hours and 21 minutes long of me just talking about algorithms. And we actually go over this exact problem even in there. Anyways, okay. So let's keep on going. Hey. Hey, baby girl. All right, let's keep going. Everybody gets this one wrong. Um, here's... Uh... Yep, let's go. Let's do this. I don't know how fast I want to do this because I don't want to because I don't want to make huh? it hard to understand. He's struggling. My graph has disappeared. The man, the man struggling with presentations. Okay. Um, okay. The, the, so... Imagine this to be a graph. <laughs> Beautiful graph. The um, imaginary low line down by the bottom showing efficient usage, little time, is the vector. The one that is uh, looking um, like an exponential, uh, trying to go through the ceiling, uh, is the list. And trying to figure out why the, 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 the list is so inefficient, I thought, maybe it's all this allocation that's being done for the nodes. So the little middle green line, which you can't see either, um, is, is the uh, lists with um, allocation taken out, pre totally pre-allocated. Uh, the point here is that the vector is always better than the list, and the list gets worse the further you go out. And this is for the case where you're doing a lot of insertions and deletions, which when I was taught uh, about data structures was what you use lists for because they're really good at inserting deleting. If you want to yeah. insert in the middle of a thousand, a hundred thousand um, integer vector, you have to shove on average uh, 50,000 elements one position. If you yeah. uh, take yeah. one out, you have to shove them about roughly half the way back. I was taught this exact same thing. Like this is, this seems very intuitive. This seems like the exact reason why you one would use a linked list. I, I'm a little flabbergasted right now. Now, this is completely irrelevant. What matters is the linear search to get to the insertion point. 
Of course, you have to go through uh, half of the list to find on the average insertion point for a list. And in an attempt to fairness, I also did the same for vectors instead of using a binary search. But anyway, so mm. the linear search dominate completely. And linear search for vectors, it's not actually a, such a good idea. First of all, a vector is, you know, for a list. A list is much bigger for a given data structure than a vector because you don't have to just store the element, the integer. You have to store the two pointers forward and backwards. You yep. have to use a doubly linked list if you're inserting, otherwise you have uh, extra problems. That makes, okay, so this, this, this already makes a lot of sense because one thing that is unique about a vector is that it's contiguous memory, right? Whereas linked list is not a contiguous piece of memory, right? Each, each little node has been malloced somewhere in the universe of space. And so you, you most certainly get like a lot of different, you know, I can't believe this man made C++. This, you can't believe this man made C++. If I were to ask chat GPT, what does someone look like who probably invented C++, I think they would, they would create this, right? So you get this whole, you get, you get something beautiful that happens with the vector that just can't happen with this. Uh, so that makes sense. And the second thing I guess I never really thought of in this problem is that to get to the node you wish to remove, you have to do a linear search every time. And that completely dominates. Um, so the, 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 the graph here, this graph here that you can't see. So I guess the only thing that would make sense is if you did head removal. Head removal and head addition probably definitely win in linked list at a pretty small number. But everything besides for that, any sort of manual looking through the list to get to a point, I guess this makes a lot more sense than I ever realized because you have to follow so many gosh darn dang pointers just to get to that point. Uh, shows you that there's not a, a minor uh, uh, disadvantage here. Um, we, we're talking about things being 50 or 100 times slower with a, with a linked list. And uh, the traversal uh, dominates. So compactness matters. Vectors are more compact than lists. And predictable usage patterns matters enormously. With a vector, you have to shove a lot of elements over, but caches are really, really good at that. So, uh, surprisingly, vectors are random access constructs, but you can stream them. Lists uh, don't have random access, but when you traverse a uh, lists, you keep doing random access. There's a node here and it goes to that node in memory. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you're actually random accessing your memory and you're maximizing your unpredictability of cache it. misses, yeah. which is exactly the opposite of what you want. So the, 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 the lesson I'm uh, trying to say here is stay compact, stay predictable, and you have three orders of magnitude of performance to, uh, to, 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 to deal with here, uh, to gain by, by being compact. You know, I have, I have his book, I think a tour of C++. I actually think I can see it right now. And uh, in there, he says, always use a vector unless if you can prove a map is faster. And I thought that was very interesting because it is better often to search position by position to get the thing you want than to perform some math calculation that offsets correctly into some larger memory region, which could follow a linked list or maybe some sort of vector or whatever it has underneath the hood to get to the point because of cache, uh, because of uh, key collisions, right? And so it's kind of surprising that that is a real thing. And it's true. We did it with, a, I did a video where using a map to do character lookup was slower than storing the characters in an array or even a vector. Even a vector in Rust was faster than using a map, which then an array was even faster. Um, now, Tour is awesome. Tour is good. True OO style. At that Look graph. at that beauty. You didn't Look see. at that beauty. Um, and said, well, I, I don't use lists of 100,000 and 200,000 elements. And there's two kinds of people. There's a, sort of the, the Google and Amazon people that says, because I don't have such little data. By the way, this is uh, literally, this is just what JavaScript looks like. I mean, this is one of the reasons why JavaScript is super hard to make it fast. People always are like, well, JavaScript's only like 30% slower than C++ or whatever. It's like, no, it's 30% slower in these really trivial situations where you're doing math because JavaScript is great at jitting. And if you just do math, of course it's great. But the moment you start really playing with memory, that's where everything just falls apart. There's two kinds of people. There's a, sort of the, the Google and Amazon people that says, because I don't have such little data structures. And then there's the students that, uh, that, that think a thousand elements is a long list. Um, and so I don't use that many hundred thousand lists, but using a few hundred thousand element lists is exactly the same. 
As a matter of fact, you can get the performance effects out of individual data structures. So here's a very simple one up there, a vector of points with, um, with four points. And the way that'll be laid down in memory, if you use the standard, is up there labeled C++. You have a little handle, a lot yep. of C++ is these little handles that tells you how to use things, and then the resource managed, which happens to be a compact data structure with um, eight uh, <coughs> integers, because it's integer points. And um, that's fine, it's compact. You have a single dereference to get to it. You have a little bit of memory overhead because uh, Vector keeps its uh, elements on the free store, so you get the, the extra word or two uh, as the free store header. But that's the way it looks. It's fairly compact. If you don't want to put it on the free store, don't. But usually that you can afford it. This, now, by the way, this is if you, if you don't understand what's happening here, this is fantastic. This is really, 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 really good. I'm told very often that I have to write in a truly object-oriented style. And there's languages that ensure you do that. Yeah. And in a truly object-oriented style, of course, um, an object is referred to by a reference. So you have a reference to the object. There's the object down there in the next line with a four with a count in it. And this happens to be a, a container of... Um, this is exactly what JavaScript does. I can even go over this here in just one second. This is exactly what JavaScript will do. Of, of, of user-defined objects. So again, you have a, a container of references, and there you have the objects. So that turns the linear compact data structure into a linked structure. We, we just saw on this invisible slide what linked structures do to your uh, performance. Um, and, and here you get a rough doubling of the size of the data structure, and whenever you want to access an element, instead of getting one indirection, you get one, two, three indirections. And indirections, again, is things that, uh, that uh, modern computers don't like very much. Um, pointers are, are poison to most optimizers. So Interesting. Yeah. You know, like, you know all those things, but it's so great how he says it. By the way, I released all these videos. Why are you showing me videos of mine? Um, so what's really interesting, so, like, how that works is that you can imagine this. Like, if you go over here to this, uh, sorry, we did a bunch of uh, showing someone how to copy and paste here. But you can imagine that if we went to something that was uh, a little bit more TypeScript-y, right? And you went in here and you jumped here. If I had something like a point, right? It doesn't matter, uh, function, create, uh, point. It doesn't matter if it's a class or not. Return, uh, x, uh, y, right? Uh, x, y, right? Who cares, right? Here you go, boom. If you go const list equals this, and in here you have create, uh, point 42, 420, uh, yank that, 69, 420, uh, 420, 69, uh, and let's go, bam, 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 bam. Why not? Even though there's no rhyme or reason to any of these things I did. So there you go. So you have this nice point. What's actually happening here is this is created and stored somewhere in the garbage collection every single time. So each one of these points are stored just somewhere in the engine of, of JavaScript. It's not like you get this nice compact format where it is literally a space that holds a small amount of value. How you could recreate this, though, in JavaScript, you could imagine something more like this. Uh, let's see. Const, uh, you know, compact would be a new array uh, or new u. Uh, let's go, what, float64 array, right? And you could imagine you could have something like eight. This, on the other hand, you have eight positions, and you could actually have a function read a point, and you could have a uh, the, you know, uh, points, and you could have the offset, right? And this, on the other hand, could return, you know, something, right? Create point, why not? This is terrible, but you get the idea, right? There you go. You have a, something that holds all the memory. I know I'm creating the point again. Just let it go, right? And that actually gives you out the point right here. It's kind of interesting, right? You get this kind of, uh, you get this like very different kind of views of the world, which is one, you store everything in a row. The other one, you just store them randomly throughout your program. The name? It's the Heapagen.